Hello, welcome back to another episode of Dirt Road Divinity, Scenic Root of the Soul. I am so excited to have with us today, Kelsey Abbott, doer of epic shit and instigator of joy and all around amazing person and athletic badass and human design reader and coach and just all around amazing person. How are you? <laughs> I'm awesome. Blushing. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, anytime we play together, I just feel effervescent. Mm. I think that's the best word I can think of is just effervescent because I feel something... like I jump up and down the whole time. <laughs> it's just so fun. There, there's something in you that brings out the joy in me. And that's a little bit of what I wanted to, to talk to you about today. You know, we've, we've played on, on your podcast, Find Your Awesome, a couple of times, and I so enjoyed those conversations. And I remember the first time I heard Instigator of Joy, and I thought, that is like the best title ever. But tell me about that. What's joy mean in your life? Oh, good. I thought you were going to ask me when, when I came up with that or how I came up with that. Cause I have no idea. Um, <laughs> joy for me, joy is, mm, joy is the color of sunrise. It's red and orange and pink and it's bubbles. It feels like pop rocks flowing through my body. It's, it's being so lit up that I can't keep it all inside and I don't want to keep it all inside. Joy is play and wonder and magic and miracles and mm, like truth. Mm. I believe that joy is our natural state yeah. Yeah. and humans forget that. So I'm here to share my joy so other people will, will know that it's safe mm -hmm. to, to be in joy will remember that joy is their natural state and will just start owning and spreading their joy. I, I love that. I love that. You know, I, I just kicked off a, a new program and one of the first assignments for the participants in the program was to think about what brings them joy and to try to incorporate one more thing into their week that brings joy. And uh, one of the participants wrote back and said, you know, this is, this is something I really struggle with because I don't know where, where to find my joy. And it, of course, I immediately thought of you and thought, well, what would Kelsey say <laughs> you know, in terms of when you're working with folks that do struggle to find their joy? Is there any, any particular encouragement you give them as to where to look, think, how to go about it. Yeah, I think sometimes when people get stuck on joy, it doesn't, it mostly has to do with like how they're defining joy and what they're, what it means to feel joy for them. Like the stories they're telling themselves about joy. I, I like to ask people like, what are you excited about right now? And I actually sent an email to my list on Monday. I don't know why I told you the day because I'm horrible with days and times and I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, we all are right now. <laughs> but what's, what was bringing me joy in that moment, it still is, most of it, is I painted my toes, I got new nail polish and it's pink and orange and I did alternate colors and every time I see my toes, it makes me so happy. And when I taught core class on Saturday, I started out with an exercise where my legs are straight up and I saw my toes and I just like made me giddy. I, love um, it. <laughs> I made fresh squeezed apple juice and poured it into popsicles and I give myself like I end a hot sweaty run I'm in Florida so it's like epic sweat um after a hot sweaty run I get in the pool with a fresh apple juice popsicle and it's amazing <laughs> excellent so yeah it was this whole list of food actually I made this um brownie batter hummus oh this stuff is amazing <laughs> that brings me joy that with like like you can't I can't bite, bite into like a fresh berry or something without like that's joy mm. that juiciness that just explodes in your mouth mm. sometimes food is the easiest way for us to access things because it's something that all mm. of us experience yeah it's like can you do you feel the explosion of flavor do you feel how happy your mouth is do you <sighs> eat like passion fruit it's just like yes mm. I love that. 
So it sounds like it doesn't require a trip to Disney World or something hugely epic to find joy, but it's looking around in the little things. It's always the little things. Mm. It doesn't have to be, yeah, it doesn't have to be Disney World. It doesn't have to be a trip anywhere. It doesn't have to be something amazing happening to you. It's just like, mm. what do you see? I saw a rainbow when I was swimming today. That brought me so much joy. And then I also see palm trees and I'm like, this is amazing. I live here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you, part t tell us a little bit about your, you're an athlete, triathlons are your thing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And do you actually find joy or connection to the divine through your, through your athletic endeavors? Yes. When I'm moving my body. Mm. Um, it's a, I'm not going to call it a meditation because I know there's a lot about like formal sitting meditation versus moving meditation. And I believe in both of them, mm -hmm. but I learned so much through my body and here I had a feeling I was going to talk about this, but <laughs> I did not see this coming. All right. So this morning on my run, my ponytail within the first like two minutes got like loose. I could feel it bouncing out and oh, that drove me crazy. By the end of the run, it was like down, kind of like a princess, a floppy, super sweaty, like soaked through Princess Leia type thing. And then it, the hair was like bouncing up and wrapping around my earring. Oh, there's not there's joyful. Like, yeah, yeah. And I would notice like how annoying that is, and and then focus on my breath, focus mm. on my feet, focus on my form focus on counting. And when I run, I count. I don't count anything in particular. I just count to eight or 12. I don't know why, but I, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was actually like an experience of divinity for me because divinity is like, it's being present and experiencing the magic. Boom, it, right, right there. The whole thing right there. Divinity is being present and experiencing the magic. Mm -hmm. mm. I recently so I believe we're all in art school classes all the time and one of my rec recent classes was well I think it's still happening the, the miracles class mm. where I get to say in the morning show me miracles and it happens Love it. the first time I did this my dog like a month ago I was super scary he's 13 his birthday is in a couple weeks he'll be 14 no. he got vertigo that's the easiest way to explain it basically his eyes going start going like no. super fast back and forth and all of a sudden he couldn't stand it's terrifying mm -hmm. and so we took him to the vet and they basically say keep him in a padded room like and just stay with him because he's basically like he's going to stumble around just keep him from hurting himself so we created oh. the padded palace and then the next day in my meditation is the first time I said, show me miracles. Lisa, no more than 10 seconds later, I hear the click, click, click of his paws. And he walked right into my office oh, wow. while I was meditating. And he is my miracle. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. And part of being present and open to the magic is also being open to see the miracles in, in everyday things mm -hmm. and to see how special something like that is. Instead of thinking it has to be some, you know, big grant, like Disney World, you know, it can be the everyday miracle, the everyday joy, the everyday magic. Every hawk I see is a miracle. Mm -hmm. Every, um, every rainbow I had, we had a whole bunch of mushrooms pop up in our backyard. For the first time there were like five of them and they were huge, like, like bigger than my face. <laughs> so that was like a form of miracles. Then they, they all died. They came back and they were in a heart. Oh, okay. Miracle. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I tell you, you know, I, I think that you believe, I think, but we've talked about this, about the idea of, um, of us even being miracles and Absolutely. what that means. And part of that is 
appreciating ourselves exactly as we are and the way that we are divinely made. And, you know, you're the one who introduced me to this concept of, of human design. And, you know, when we went through that together and I learned about how I'm made and started appreciating what others might see as, as weirdness or oddities or, you know, flakiness or whatever, me going, oh gosh, that's just the way I am. And that's exactly how I'm supposed to be. And that's cool. It allowed me to appreciate like who I am and almost like the miracle of who I am and who everybody else is at a deeper level. Yes. Can you tell us what, what is human design? What drew you to it? Um, and how, how can we experience miracles through human design? Mm, okay. So what is human design? Human design is the easiest way to explain it is your little baby soul got called to earth school. I got so excited. And it, in that moment, shows who you're going to be and what you're here to do. Mm. And then it shows all of the gifts. I call them the golden nuggets that you would need to be that person and do what you're supposed to do. And then when it gathered all that information and put it in a little blueprint, I was like, okay, what time and place and date do I need to make my entrance? And that's the day, time, and place you were born. Boom. Boom. Yep. That's <laughs> miracle number one. Human design gives us that blueprint so that now, years later, we can go back and look at that and be like, oh, that, that is my truth. That is how, what I'm here to do. That is how I'm supposed to be. Because mm. um, the second we actually are born, we start forgetting everything. And then people tell us how, how it is. How we're supposed and, to be. Yeah, so we start believing all this stuff that is so not truth. And we have yeah. to come back to our truth. Mm. Mm. And the beauty of recognizing my truth and someone else's truth are going to be different. Yes. And that's totally okay. That's yes, totally that's the okay. fun of it. Because, okay, we're a planet of seven and a half billion people, right? That's what we think. Yeah. But maybe we're not. Mm. Maybe we are a planet of one human shattered into seven and a half billion pieces and all of these pieces come together mm. we need every single one of the pieces they all come together and that's how we rise and if my piece is exactly like your piece that actually isn't helping the whole no it's kind of boring yeah yeah there's going to be a, a hole somewhere yeah. if that's the case mm. yeah. it's so fun to look and and have people in your life that are like Oh, you've got the gift of honing in on details. Can you help me with this? <laughs> my, my design actually says not inclined to provide details. <laughs> so like, I know that's not my zone of genius. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that, um, that <laughs> I thought about you the other day, um, it was <laughs> things that light you up and get you know, for, we are of the same, like our human design is similar, our, our big mm -hmm. picture human design. And um, that whole idea of the, the, the sacred yes, or the, the hell yes, or the sacral yes, and saying yes to those things that really light us up and, and bring that effervescent, joy-filled feeling versus saying yes to those things that are kind of constrictive and make us go like this, you know? Oh. <laughs> As MGs, and this is manifesting generators, and this goes for generators too, and really all humans, but like it's most important for us. We're here to let go of the heavy and the hard. Mm. If it feels heavy and hard, it's not for you. It's not for me. And that has been a game changer for me. Don't, don't force my way through something that is so not for me. Just because I feel like I should, because everyone around me is telling me I'm supposed to do it. I know I'm not, I'm not here to feel that way. I'm here to be like super lit up. And that is how I elevate the world by love being it. lit up. Mm -hmm. I love it. And some people are going to go, ah, you hurt my eyes. And that's mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Hazard. And that's totally all right. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me more about your path with, um, you know, you've already mentioned that you see miracles and magic basically everywhere. 
um, I know just from previous conversations that um, I believe marine biology was in your past and you're a writer, you know, like natural oriented kind of award-winning writer. Has that played a role in, in shaping some of your spirituality too, in terms mm -hmm. of your connection with the earth and all the yes. beauty on her? Yes. Um, that hair did not belong where it was. <laughs> now my nose feels much better. All right. <laughs> yes. The nature, Mother Earth, every morning I take my dog out in the backyard, in the fenced in backyard, bare feet. And I say, good morning, Mother Earth. Good morning, Father Sky. Mm, love it. Ah, the, like miracles, a full moon, a half moon, a new moon, all the stars, miracles. The grass under my feet or potentially mushrooms that weren't there the day before, miracle. Mm -hmm. I told you before we started that the place I feel mm, like most at home and most in the presence of divinity and magic and miracles and joy and everything is lying on the ocean floor when the sun streams down. So like looking up at the sun coming down through the water, that for me is everything. Mm. Yeah, the natural world, we're all one. I don't see a separation between us like awkward bipedal humans and, and the one, the, the creatures who swim, the creatures who work, walk on four paws. I'm like, we are all one. We're all part of this puzzle. You know, dogs have designs too. Bears have designs too. If you know their birth time, we can figure it all out. My dog is very much a projector. Very much a one three projector. He needs to know all the things about all the things. <laughs> he is living his design. <laughs> I love he it. He does not, however, have the gift of an amplified and dramatic voice. According to his chart, I just guessed his birth time. So maybe I can like go minute by minute and see if I can find where that uh, gift pops up. Because I'm pretty sure he does have the gift of an amplified and dramatic voice. <laughs> I'd, never, I'd never contemplated applying it to animals. But I love it. So as far as human design is concerned, a little different from like say astrology or the Myers-Briggs type indicator or the Enneagram or any of those other things that people might turn to, to help them learn more about themselves or have insights. How, how, how is it different? And how is it like as a tool, what, what does it bring that can help us find our joy? I just keep looking behind you. Beautiful so first word. of all, all you need to figure out your human design is your place, date, and time of birth and your birth time ideally hopefully is on your birth certificate it's not hopefully your mom remembers the exact time somehow i like i remember from a very early age knowing i was born at 12 28 so i happen to remember that so if you're a weirdo like me <laughs> got that um and you can go i've got a page on my website you can go under the play with me a tab on kelseyabbott.com mm -hmm. the first thing is like new to human design start here and you go there and put in your information and I'll send you your chart. Okay. So then we've got astrology uses the same things kind of. When I look at an astrolog astrological chart, I don't know what to do with it. I am so <laughs> baffled. I can't, none of that stuff like, some of it lands a little bit, mm -hmm. but a yeah. lot doesn't. Human design is so expansive. It mm -hmm. gives you permission to be who you are and reminds you, it reminds you to stay in your own lane in an empowering way. Mm. Like to know like the example of being able to hone in on details, know that like my soul is, did not sign up for the details. <laughs> like nobody's gonna benefit from me trying to grasp the details and share the details. And like, just, it's better if I just stay out of that. <laughs> And I work with people who are really good at de details and ask for their help and receive it with immense mm. gratitude and radiance. That's a biggie right there. Ask for the help and actually receive it. Woo! Yeah. So let's, let's compare to Myers-Briggs for a second. I feel mm -hmm. like we might, are we both ENFPs? Yes. Okay. So thanks to human design, I also have a new understanding of that whole introvert extrovert thing. 
Mm-hmm. My profile in human design profile is essentially like your personality. Mine is four, six and four sixes. We go super deep with people super fast. Like <laughs> we're not here for surface level conversations at all. Small talk we're super people. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we go so deep and then it, it's a little bit exhausting because mm-hmm. we go so deep. So then we, we love all the people like love humans and then we need, we just need a break. Yeah. yeah. So that's like extrovert, introvert. So yeah. there are a lot of types that are like that. So let's mm-hmm. just not use the introvert, extrovert label. Yep. And then, like I said, when it comes to Enneagram, my understanding of Enneagram is this big. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it's a little Y <laughs> on joy. <laughs> um, but it feel, every time I examine it, it feels like there is some truth to it. And yet it seems like we're choosing our wounds. Mm. Ooh. And what human design does for us, it shows us our magic and our sparkle mm. and a lo- gives us room to expand into like gifts we don't even recognize yet. Things that we can say, oh, when I did that the other day, I guess I was using that gift. Huh. How can I use that more? I love that. I love that. And what a difference between choose your wound and expand your magic. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I choose magic. Yeah, magic feels better. Yes. Every single time Absolutely. I'm going to choose magic. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, you have a new um, a new YouTube effort. Fashion, I fascination. Do. fashion. What's that all about? Oh my goodness, it's so fun. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> I love it. Is that an MG thing too? <laughs> we just yes. jump. <laughs> Yes, we just jump, we just bounce. We just like <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Um, so it's so fun. My friend Tina Olson and I are, she's a theta healer. And we just get on, we're doing like bite-sized little bits about, we're doing a lot of human design stuff. We're doing some stuff about theta healing. We've got some random conversations where we just happen to be recording in there. Like, so we've got, we've got a little conversation on grief and, and just how to process it. Mm-hmm. We're, mm-hmm. we're not putting it out in any sort of schedule, mm-hmm. but yeah, you can go find us at Inspiration Station with Kelsey and Tina and subscribe. And there's a lot of human design information right there. And there's more coming nice. very, fairly regularly. But it's so fun. So I, in May, well, no, let me back up. Last December, I was like, I need an internet vacation. Mm-hmm. So I, for me, that meant no Instagram, no Facebook, and like just swooping into email for seconds to make sure there wasn't anything that like really, truly like a bill to pay, mm-hmm. like something that was super critical. And that lasted like two weeks and it was life-changing. I loved it. And it helped me see things so clearly. Like I could see all the, all the um, marketing ploys of like last chance, get in while you can. And I was like, what is this whack mindset we are growing all over the place yeah yeah um so that happened in december then in may i got this really hard nudge get out of here <laughs> i've been saying there's got to be another way there's got to be another way so um yeah i got this nudge to retire from social media i haven't been on i mean hi social media <laughs> <laughs> but i haven't been here since may and so i'm it's given me this space to explore other avenues i've got to find your awesome podcast but like what else? What do I love to do? I love talking to magical people. So YouTube, why not? It's just another way to do it. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. That's one thing, you know, one of the things that kind of inspired this, this little, you know, interview opportunity is I miss people, you know, and, and in the era of, you know, stay in your home and, and social distancing and all, all the other stuff. I was like, I need, I need actual conversations. So you know, there's an opportunity. Sometimes it feels so heavy and constricting, you know, and then at other times, like for me right now, I'm finally feeling a little bit more expansive because I'm, I'm talking and interacting and, and willing to be out there, um, in a, in a different way for, for myself. And so, you know, it's just interesting how the like same platforms can affect people differently and affect the same person differently at different times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a season. And I, I tell everyone, yeah, I retired from social media and remember 
Michael Jordan re- retired from basketball to go play baseball, and then he came back. Yep. So I'm not predicting the future. I have no idea what's going to happen. I can tell you I'm not going to be back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're in far in advance, I look. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You're enjoying your space right now. I'm having so much fun. I'm so glad. I- <laughs> <laughs> I really like I'm having so much fun in my life and business right now I'm, I'm teaching myself how to juggle I'm horrible at it if you want to like actually like label it but I have zero expectations and no like accountability which feels so good like I'm not I think if I were on social media right now I'd be like sharing videos of juggling and then I'd feel like I had to get better instead I'm just doing it for fun uh-huh. and I crack myself up with like the ball going everywhere and <laughs> fun love that just juggling because actually because because I was woken in the night this is like a month ago and told you need to learn to juggle (laughs) and I was like wait why it was voice from God 222 I'm like wait universe (laughs) could you have brought me this when the sun was up but okay so like by 7 a.m. I had already ordered juggling balls. And I remember telling my husband when we were walking our dog this morning, that morning, like, so I ordered juggling balls this morning. And he's like, what? what? I'm like, I'm going to teach it. myself how to juggle. I love it. So you mentioned the 222. So numbers being significant. You mentioned hearing a voice that said, and, you know, you mentioned the universe. So at what point, or has it been a lifetime thing, but at what point did you allow those things to start sinking in as magic and miracles too? I don't know. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, there wasn't like a moment. That's all part of remembering who I am. Mm. You know, when I was little, I called myself Tashi. Supposedly because I couldn't say Kelsey. When I was on a plane to San Francisco, again, time, I don't know, let's say it was 10 years ago, I was reading this book about a a former Buddhist monk turned private eye fiction. And in it, it describes it, the Tibetan word Tashi mm. means light. Mm. So as like a two-year-old, I called myself light. I knew that I was light. Mm. I knew that my soul was light. I knew that I was here to play in the light. I knew I was here to bring light to the planet. I was already telling people that I was saying, me, Tashi. I love that. Wow. It's no wonder sparkly AF fits, Mm. right? (laughs) And I love the fact that you work to bring that out in others. Mm. That's why we're here. Like we get one go around on this time. Mm-hmm. Let's have fun. You are <laughs> such good. a bright light. And I think we have so much fun together. And hopefully people watching this are just like, they find themselves smiling. And they're like, wait, why yeah. am I been watching this? And my cheeks hurt. Why do my cheeks hurt? Because you're experiencing That's- joy right now, right this second. <laughs> you know, the first time I ever ran half marathon, <laughs> the thought of me doing this at all was just shocking at, at, at the beginning. But I found at the end, the thing that hurt the most on me was my cheeks because I was just grinning through the entire thing. I'm like, what the hell is this? You know, that that it's the cheeks from all the smiling. But I think it goes back to that idea that when we are open to it, there's joy all around us. Mm-hmm. if we have the eyes to see it and the heart to actually experience and feel it. And I think it takes just as much effort, mm-hmm. even less effort. To, the joy is always there. We can fall into the joy. It takes more effort actually to like, to fall into the victim story, mm-hmm. to fall into the everything is happening to me, mm-hmm. to fall into the, this is just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Isn't it so much more fun to believe in miracles? <laughs> and to go searching for miracles on a daily basis, like to wake up and be like, oh, what miracle yes. something I going to see today? Yeah, I love that. I love that. So what do you think? Do you think those are the biggest like barriers to joy? What are, what, what do you see as barriers to joy? Mm. I think there's some people that are afraid of joy because 
there's this belief like, oh my God, things are so good. When's it all going to come crashing down? Yeah. And I think the truth is to really, truly experience joy. We also have to experience pain. Mm -hmm. We can't, it's a wave, like experience the pain, experience the joy. And if you're not going all the way down, if you're numbing yourself and you're like kind of keeping yourself like right here, you're only going to go up to right here. Mm Mm-hmm. If you let yourself like go down and find the gifts in that really painful experience, you're going to find the gifts in the really amazing experiences too. Or in the experiences that aren't that amazing. So many other people are talking about the hearts the mushrooms made in their backyard. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) And apple juice popsicles. They're so good. You've inspired me. (laughs) They're so good. I'm making more today because now I'm out. I finished my last one this morning. I love it. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Well, do you have anything else to share in terms of, you know, the the kind of scenic route of the soul or how to work with you when it comes to human design or just inspiring joy? All right, let's do that. How to work with me before I forget that. Okay. So you can get an individual human design reading, a partner human design reading, um, and all sorts of other fun stuff over at KelseyAbbott.com. I also do human design play dates for people who have already had a reading. If you want to learn how to read charts for your friends and family, come play. Cool. All right. Now that's it. all KelseyAbbott.com mm-hmm. and go listen to the find your awesome podcast and go see inspiration station with Kelsey and Tina. Now the road to divinity. I love it. I love that you call it the dirt road. <laughs> so much. I grew up on a dirt road. Mm-hmm. Dirt road is home. We are manifesting generators, which means we bounce all over the place. And it's like a, sometimes it's like a ping, 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 ping. And this is what we're here for. You know, in the last couple months, the universe has cleared a couple weeks for me. It just like not, not both in a row, but like I had this one week, all of a sudden I had nothing on my schedule no podcast recordings yeah it was glorious but I was like there's something funny about that (laughs) like why are there like four clients scheduled the next week and like why did all the people like what's gonna happen that week and then I don't know what inspired it but I did this deep dive into plant-based nutrition and it was like oh I needed to clear that space so I could just like go all in and do this like one week intensive Wow. like totally designed by me or mm-hmm. spirit mm-hmm. I don't know but I just followed the urge this week I've been learning about breathing I love it yeah but the thing is the universe is always showing us human design understanding our own human design and understanding other people's human design allows us to own and celebrate ourselves and own and celebrate other people as they're living their design and stop telling other people that they're doing life wrong. Amen. <laughs> Jeez. Amen. Yes. Yes. And stop believing other people when they say we're doing life wrong. Yes. We're doing it our way. The people only way like to do us it wrong. are supposed to bounce all over the place and do all the things at once. And when we do that, it's just like us running around with a trick-or-treat bucket we're collecting all the golden nuggets from all these different places and we're doing it all at once whereas different energy types are gonna do it like go all the way in this way for a while and then they'll like turn and go all the way this way that's not that's not what we're here for we are here you and me we're here to do things people thought were impossible and to do it with so much joy and play that we inspire other people to do the same i love that yeah Every time I'm in a, in a program or read a book or whatever that says, oh, you must niche very narrowly oh. and just do this one thing. And every time I'm just like, oh God, you know, fe- ugh, that's what it feels like to my energy. And the thought, like the first time we talked and you're like, oh, but this is how you're made. And you do, you, you do lots of things at once because that's just how you're made. And there was something in me that just went, ah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And for the first time, I didn't feel like a flaky, flighty mess, you know, because I do tend to hop and bounce, you know, and having that permission, uh, you know, almost like, and I don't know why I ever felt like I needed permission, but it's like society, I, I felt like I felt the judgment, you know, so instead feeling the permission of going, oh, 
I get to be me and that's how I'm made. And that's how I can be of greatest service in the world. And yay. <laughs> and I can appreciate you for not being like that other people, yes. you know? Yeah. And you, when you are, you, you <laughs> are so fun and <laughs> like, you really are this bouncing ball of light. And I will follow a bouncing ball of light anywhere. Like, <laughs> I just want to be in your energy. And I'm not the only person who feels that mm. at all. You are, you are here to show us the way. Oh. And what a ride. What mm -hmm. a ride the way forward is. And, and so, much, so much more of an enjoyable ride when we allow the joy to be a guide or, or to at least be a traveling companion in the process, because otherwise it's a rough ride. That's not going to feel very good at all. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like what happens? Like I invite everyone who's watching right now to take an experiment, an experimental day. If you feel brave enough to take an entire 24 hour period where you follow the joy mm. all day, Ooh, I what love brings this. you joy? Feel the joy in your body. I said it feels to me like champagne bubbles or pop rocks. What does it feel like in your body? Mm. Go follow it. And then like, you know, one thing is going to light you up and cause joy in your body. Go follow that. And then is it going to wear out? Okay. Like, so now something else, it's going to, it might make you zig and zag. It might make you do one thing all day. Just see, what does it feel like? Mm. Let yourself do that. And maybe how do the people around you respond? We might have this story and the people around us are going to be so angry that we're being selfish. Mm. Guess what? Our gift to the planet is to be lit up. Yeah. That yeah. is how we're here to change the world. Mm. You know, I was... I was in the midst of a, of a little bit of a rough time, I'll admit, um, back a couple months ago. And it was when stuff, you know, political stuff and other stuff just got really, really, really heavy. And I was feeling it. And what I realized is that I was feeling this deep grief and that I hadn't really allowed myself to, to really grieve since my husband had passed. And I, I mean, I was just feeling all the feels. And I know that some of it was collective feels I was feeling. But anyway, I get a little, a little nudge from the universe to take myself on a little mini vacation. Go to Eureka Springs, Arkansas. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice. I'm gone. You know, <laughs> Wear my mask and everything, but I'm gone. And um, I, I will get like divine assignments when I do stuff like that. And I'm down there and I'm like, why am I here? well, we've got some stuff for you to do. Okay. But first we want you to take a day just for you. Okay. And what am I to do in this day? Go rediscover your joy. That was my like invitation from the universe. Go rediscover your joy. Wow. Okay. Okay. You know, so I did, I just, I walked around this town and just did things, ate things, visited things, you know, did things that were nothing but what will light me up? And what was interesting, the next day I was talking to um, the lady who owned the bed and breakfast that I was staying at, and uh, she had lost her husband around the same time I lost uh, mine. And she'd asked me, well, what did you do yesterday? What, what, was your, what was your plan? I was like, to find joy. And it was so, her response was so interesting because you could tell that that maybe wasn't on her radar as being something you can just find, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was, I was grateful at that moment that, that it's something that I knew that was there to, to just rediscover, to, to refine, to, to sink into more deeply. And I was glad to be able to have that conversation with her as well. But there, there is this grief, joy, teeter-totter thing, you know? And, and I think some people maybe do feel guilty, you know, oh, bad things have happened. If I'm joyous, should I feel guilty? I should, maybe I should just be, you know, in the grief. And um, what I found is that it's almost as if it, finally allowing myself to experience the grief, to speak to what you were talking about earlier in terms of the cycle, riding the waves, finally experiencing the grief for real has allowed me to really experience joy on a totally different level as well. And, and I'm just so grateful 
for that. You know, sometimes the the things that bring us the, you know, the low ends of the waves suck and, Mm -hmm. you know, we wish that they could be different, but then being open to seeing the blessing or the miracle, as you said, you know, on the other end, well, it was a gift. It was a gift. We remember that everything is temporary. Mm-hmm. We know that joy, that like super sparkly joy is on the other side of that grief. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But the whole idea of being an instigator of joy, you know, it's like I was, I was seeking the joy treasure, you know, on that mm-hmm. particular outing, but the idea of instigating that in life and maybe even being a catalyst of it, you know, for it in others. What a beautiful way to live your life. Thank you for, for showing up and being willing to move through the world like that. Mm, you're welcome. I know I'm here to play in the light and it, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm like, I used to feel the shoulds so heavy of Kelsey, you need to like go help people through their grief and you know what I know some amazing coaches and therapists who work help people through grief Mm -hmm. and I'm that's not my gift Mm. yeah I'm not here for that but I'm here to play in the light yeah I can help you remember who you are I can help you remember joy and I can recommend you to some great people who can help you through grief Mm. Beautiful gifts. Yeah. All the way around. All the way around. We need I all of so them. I so appreciate your time. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I love playing with all you. The pieces. <laughs> we need to do this more often. <laughs> Just because it's fun. Yes, please. <laughs> well, thank you. And I've got links to all of the ways to, to find your website, to find your YouTube fascination station. Um, your podcast, inspiration. find your inspiration, inspiration station. I like fascination station too. Maybe we'll start another one. Well, well I, I need to make sure I didn't get that wrong some other places, but all the links to, to find you. And um, I would like to put a big plug in for anyone who's interested in learning more about their human design and what it means. It really was a game changer for me. And um, having the opportunity to have that conversation with you and learn more about myself in ways that were uplifting and empowering and not rooted in, you know, you need to do this different or you should do that or whatever um, was just, it was beautiful. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that little (laughs) testimonial. (laughs) Well, y'all go check out Kelsey Abbott, kelseyabbott.com and all of the other amazing ways to connect with you. Find out what your human design is. Find out, because it really, it is a path to joy. I, I mean, at its basic, you know, knowing yourself is also knowing what your dirt road, you know, <laughs> might look yeah. like and following the little golden nuggets to get, you know, to that, to that joyful, it's not like joy is a destination, but it's a way of walking the road, I guess. Yeah, joy is the road. Oh, yeah, yes. Joy is the dirt road. Huh. Mm-hmm. With that, we've kind of come full circle. Yeah, we have. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who watched. And we will see you again on the next episode of Dirt Road Divinity. Bye.